we look at this, we see a projection is, you know, 9.5 billion people uh, in another couple of decades. Real challenge. And of course, in our country, what's it going to look like? It's not going to be the same old mix that we have today. A lot more diverse, right? A lot more diversity. Absolutely. Here's another question. Let's look at our own consumption. We're 5% of the human of the, of the world's population. What percent of the resources and waste do we do we use and and and, and uh, generate? What would you say? 25. 25. Pretty good. Good guess. So in essence, when you look at this, we're five of the population. We're 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 basically consuming at five to six times what the world average is. So if we were going to have everybody in the world, the Chinas of the world, the Indians of the world, every place else in the world consuming at the same rate we do, we need another, what is it, five worlds worth of resources, you know, at this rate. Where are we going to get that? Hmm. Pretty tough, huh? It's tough. <laughs> Is there any way to uh, improve this uh, projector? Just to sound like it would yeah, slow the shoes. Close the blind. Yeah, shoes. Yeah. I know, I think there's something wrong with the, uh, the uh, film, the, the projector. It's not as bright as it was before. It sort of changed all of a sudden. It's not, it was, it was a sudden shift of the slide. But at any rate, we can go on here. Maybe a bulb or something is dimming or turning out or something. But let's, let's do the best we can with this. This shows you, uh, I want to go through a couple of quick uh, scenarios here uh, of trends, of sustainability trends. We're looking at COD here, and what we see is basically a crash uh, to, to, to now to the point where over the last 50 years we've reduced the COD supplies in the North Atlantic to about 10% of what they were. Why did that happen? What was a big change that caused that to happen? You see what our... Our, our catch has been, and all of a sudden, boom! What happened there? What, what was this about? This is about the introduction of big trawlers. The gigantic trawlers scoop up 60 tons of fish in a whack. You know, big investment, got to keep it going. Going much deeper, much broader than ever before than in the past, scooping up everything in sight. Uh, and you're seeing uh, the same kind of crashing in, uh, in the populations of around some of the other fish, you know, you got flounder, tuna, swordfish, halibut and grouper, those two um, projected for, for almost extinction. So we've got a big problem. There's one expert out there said, what we're seeing out in the seas is the last great buffalo hunt. So it's an important uh, development that's happening in the oceans. It's not getting uh, enough play, I think. Another one is this, uh, look at endangered species. And this little chart with this, 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 this part here, and that part here is the extinct, critically endangered, uh, and so forth. If you just look at that, and you go over here to the amphibians, what you find is that you've got 40% of the primates, I mean, the 40, look at the amphibians, 30% of the amphibians, 40% of the primates, and basically all the elephants are endangered, in part because of this trend. This shows you the world's forests, and basically what this says down here is that, you know, there were 62 uh, million uh, uh, square kilometers of, of forest originally, We've only got about a fourth of that original forest left. We've planted some more, so maybe we're at about half. And so uh, the challenge is not so much here in the U.S., because if you see up here in Europe and in North America, actually over the last uh, decade or two, we've, we've increased our planting of trees. But that's not been close to offsetting what we've got in Latin America and, and, and Africa and the like. And so we're still, uh, we're still seeing a lot of loss of habitat on a loss of habitat, which is giving rise to, you know, those extinctions. What, what causes the extinctions? What causes the, uh, those, those threatened species? Certainly habitat. What are some of the other causes? Ideas? Hunting. Po hunting poaching, particularly, particularly poaching. What else? Pollution. Pollution, absolutely. Uh, what was another problem we got in the Great Lakes? Oh, invasive species. species, absolutely. Those two things are critical, uh, that, and they're po posing big problems here. This is an interesting chart, liquid oil and gas uh, depletion projections. Um, this shows uh, you know, traditional, conventional petroleum under the dotted line here. You can see where it's coming from, Russia, Europe, and the like. And then above there is uh, you know, the deep water drilling, uh, heavy oil and shales, liquid natural gas, and the like. 
Uh, and of course, some of this uh, it, it will shift uh, production on the production side uh, going down the slope. What will affect that? Affect the, the, the slope, this slope, this one down here. What affects this in this projection of going forward, where, we, where we're headed? Con conservation efforts, uh, price, Yeah, uh, conservation economy. Effort, economy. Absolutely. Look back at here. What happened here? Why is it that, you know, we, in the 70s and 80s and so forth, we got so, so responsible and we were conserving so much? What, what, what inspired that? The, uh, the Iranian uh, problem. Oil, yeah, OPEC, the oil, uh, oil embargo from the OPEC uh, oil producing nations. Basically, it sent the price way up and voila, price up, consumption down. And mind you, all the way along here, we've had these so called CAFE standards that were demanding higher fuel efficiency from automobiles. And basically, Detroit was saying, sorry, customers aren't buying it. You know, we can't. We can't do this, and by the way, if you make us do this, we'll have to lay off all these workers, and so really wasn't any enforcement. So when you look at this, to my way of thinking, it tells two things. It says, number one, cafe regulation, sort of the command and control, not really very effective, but pricing is super effective in driving behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Very, very effective. That's what will take the market where it needs to go. This one we all don't need to talk about, but climate change, we've heard so much about, we can talk about that for three days. Uh, but, but fundamentally, what we've got here is this kind of collision course. We've got decreasing natural resources and so forth, and, and more pollution and increasing population and consumption. And so basically, we're headed for this tightening of resource versus demand. And what, what does that lead to? You've got stuff. It's going to be, and I want stuff. Friction, war. Yeah, conflict, right? Big conflict. And, and uh, so the question is, how can we prevent the big squeeze? What do we have to do? What should we do to get out of that dilemma, of that collision course? Decrease consumption. Yeah, decrease consumption. What else? Protecting the natural resources. Protecting the natural resources, resources. yeah. What else? Alternate fuel supplies. Alternate supplies, yeah. What else? Well, when you look at it, here's the factors that contribute to the big squeeze, and then these give us some clues about where we might apply our energy. So, for example, use. Two fundamental things. How much we consume per person and how many of us there are, right? You do that simple multiplication. So, certainly we can do something about use. What about the number of people? <laughs> birth what affects birth rates? Look at the, you know, you got places in, in Sub-Saharan Africa where seven children are average, mm -hmm. still, to this day. What, what affects those rates most, more than any place else, more than anything else? More, more mortality. mortality. Education. This one. The education of females. Statistics have shown, uh, studies have shown, dramatic reduction in the number of children, average number of children per family with the increased education of women. And certainly you see that true in, think of Italy. There's a Catholic country. You think of all places, that would be a place where you'd have lots of children. But reality is they don't even have sustained levels of reproduction, fertility. Because women are educated, they're out in the workforce, you know, they have a whole new perspective on quality of life. And so there are things, there are policy decisions that we make that can actually help that in ways that maybe we may, we may not even appreciate. Number two, the thing we all talked about, destruction, whether it's wasting it or destroying it or contaminating it, all about the same thing. We're taking resources out of, this, out of the picture that are not being put to good use. Supply, uh, hey, stuff, we do run out of stuff. The question is, how fast are we going to be able to transition? Certainly that's true about petroleum. There's only so much of that stuff. The question is, are we going to run out? We are going to run out sooner or later.